Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, the latest on the COVID-19 relief effort in Washington as local vaccination reservations continue today in San Antonio. Outside with live cam, going to be another warm one today, but then things are going to be changing again. Justin Horns, catch your forecast coming up. Good morning. It is Wednesday, February 24th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Yesterday, I decided to replant some of my plants, Justin. It was just so warm and beautiful, and I think we might be getting some rain this week. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll yeah. do that. We're, we're all going to be replacing some plants, <laughs> I think, eventually down the line. Uh, but be patient, though, because some of these plants could come back, and uh, it is going to get warmer. Uh, temperatures today are really warm this morning. In fact, in the 60s, uh, we could see some fog this morning, too. It's humid. If you've been outside, uh, you know what I'm talking about. 62 Canyon Lake, 66 New Braunfels, 64 Randolph, 65 Castroville, 62 in Hondo. So everybody's in the 60s, and dew points are in the 60s, too. So that means we may have some issues with fog. So far, it hasn't been bad, but places like Uvalde, we're starting to see that number, the visibility number, come down some. We're good here in town for now, and uh, we'll keep an eye on the visibility as we go throughout the course of the morning. We are watching a frontal boundary, which right now is across North Texas. You can see some of the cooler numbers up there in Lubbock and Amarillo, not bitter cold, but this front will uh, move into the area tonight. It'll help to kick up some showers. We've also got some energy coming in tomorrow. So yes, as Sarah mentioned, there is some rain in the forecast, and uh, we think it'll actually stick with us into the weekend. Here's the forecast for today, up to 77. We got up to 78 yesterday. It's been a warm stretch here now after last week's bitter cold. Southerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. We'll take a look at that extended forecast in, here in just a bit. But let's get over to Samuel now. And uh, it's early, but it seems like we still have a few issues on the roads. Yeah, a few uh, issues, Justin. Good morning to you. Good morning to everyone out there. Uh, the first one is north of New Braunfels uh, in Hayes County, actually, but it is affecting 35 once you get into Comal County. There's uh, I 35's closed northbound between Posey Road and Center Point Road. So if you're someone who commutes uh, maybe to San Marcos or up to Austin this morning, that's something to uh, watch out for. So northbound 35 in Comal and Hayes County has some issues this morning. And we also have this construction again here at I-10 eastbound at FM uh, 1518, uh, 62 uh, miles per hour down to the speed in that area. So that's something to uh, watch out for. We had a few delays here on Bandera Road, but looks like that is cleared up uh, 10 minutes between 410 and 1604 and then 11 minutes between 1604 and 410. This is Transguide 410 at Callahan, one lonely vehicle there, and then I-10 at Callahan looking fine this morning as well. We'll keep checking around the area and bring another update soon. Back over to you. Thank you, Samuel. We're going to actually start with the pandemic and encouraging sign this morning. NBA fans getting to attend a basketball game in New York. Here's ABC's Megan Tavrizian with the latest. This morning, a cause for celebration. Basketball fans doing something they haven't done in nearly one year. I feel like Willie Wonka in the chocolate factory and I got the golden ticket. <laughs> Two arenas in New York reopening at 10% capacity. At Madison Square Garden, where the Knicks hosted the Warriors, 2,000 were allowed inside. At Barclays Center, where the Nets played the Kings, 300 season ticket holders. All were required to socially distance, wear a mask, and show two negative COVID tests. In the race to vaccinate, the CDC now says 17% of the U.S. adult population now received at least one shot. And now handling the vaccines may get easier. The New York Times reports the FDA is set to allow the Pfizer vaccine to be stored in regular freezers as opposed to ultra-cold conditions. Vaccine makers say they're on track to deliver 600 million doses by July. Pfizer ramping up production and Moderna now expecting to double its shipments by April. We are now targeting delivery of the second 100 million doses of our vaccine by the end of May and a third 100 million doses by the end of July a full two months ahead of schedule. And Johnson & Johnson is set to release data on its one-dose vaccine, with emergency use approval expected as soon as Friday. A good sign of progress. I'm so excited. My smile under this mask is just huge. Um, I'm so glad to be home. We're home, baby. Meanwhile, in Washington, the House is set to vote Friday on President Biden's $1.9 trillion COVID relief package. But there's a battle in the Senate. Republicans want less spending. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, San Diego. 
Well, here's a look at the latest on coronavirus here in San Antonio. Bear County is reporting 270 new cases and nine new deaths. That brings our total number of cases to 193,961 and our total number of COVID-19 related deaths to 2,761. There continues to be a decline in our local hospitals. 569 COVID-19 patients are being treated this morning. 208 are in the ICU and 126 are in ventilators. We also have the latest COVID-19 numbers in San Antonio posted for you on our website. And more good news this morning. WellMed set to open up its reservation hotline for the COVID-19 vaccine later this morning. Appointments will be made for 30,000 new doses of the Moderna vaccine at two of the WellMed clinics. That reservation hotline will be open at 8 o'clock this morning. The number to call is there, 833-968-1745. Remember to keep calling if you don't get an answer at first try. Today, local leaders are joining forces with San Antonio nonprofit for a virtual event happening later on this morning. Restore Education's second annual police policy forum will focus on the community needs of education and workforce development. Stephen Cavazos is live this morning and explains how the nonprofit is giving people the tools they need to change their lives. Good morning, Stephen. Hey, good morning, David. Well, that is the overall goal of Restore Education to transform the lives of at risk adults and youth and turn them into college ready and career ready students that can achieve the future they deserve. Now, today's virtual event is called Bold Action for Equity and Workforce Solution, and that will touch on new ways to reduce poverty and improve fair opportunities for historically underserved populations across our community. Now, there will be five panelists who will represent major corporations, businesses, and educational institutions. This year, more than 60 people have actually graduated with high school diplomas or workforce certificates through Restore Education. Now, the 90-minute event will begin streaming at 8 this morning. We have a link that's already posted on our website. You can tune in at ksat.com. Now, coming up later on GMSA, we'll hear from one San Antonio mother who tells us how Restore Education not only transformed her life, but restored her faith in higher learning. That's coming up later on GMSA. David, Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. All right, it's 437 and 64 degrees. So coming up this morning, the latest on Tiger Woods following a rollover crash that injured both legs. Plus, the San Antonio Spurs are back in action tonight, but they'll be down several players. Details just ahead. And another live look outside with live. Look at it, it's 64 degrees already. Nice. So it's going to be a little warm today, and then things will be changing for the rest of the week, as you would expect. Justin Orr has got that for you. Coming up, you're watching Good Morning San Antonio. Security officials testifying at Congress's first hearing on the deadly siege of the Capitol, and they are casting blame and pointing fingers, but they also acknowledge they were unprepared for the violence. Senators drilled down on the stunning security failure in the midst warning signs as rioters stormed the Capitol on January 6th. Top officials responsible for the security of the U.S. Capitol that day told a, con a congressional panel that faulty intelligence hampered their ability to prepare for the deadly riot. A former U.S. Capitol police chief blamed the disaster in part on what he called intelligence failures by federal law enforcement agencies. Tiger Woods awake and responsive after surgery. According to a post on his Twitter account, the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department says Woods was involved in a single car rollover yesterday morning. The Twitter account says he's recovering in his hospital room at Harbor UCLA Medical Center. The hospital's chief medical officer says Woods' right leg, foot, and ankle are injured, as well as muscles and tissue around him. He says doctors inserted a rod, screws, and pens to stabilize the fractured bones. Before that accident, Woods had been recovering from back surgery in hopes of resuming his pro golf career. Well, a scary moment caught on dash cam video in Washington State. It happened last week. Check this out. A dump truck is captured heading straight into a retaining wall on the interstate. The crash resulted in Look at that video right there. Numerous accidents with other car debris was spilled over the roadway and 100 gallons of diesel fuel was spilled. Two people suffered non life threatening injuries. Authorities are now studying the video to try to figure out what led up to that crash. Hey, how about some more good news this morning? The Spurs are in Oklahoma City. Going to take on the Oklahoma City Thunder tonight to end the rodeo road trip. Certainly not at full strength, though. They are down six players, including five of the NBA's health and safety protocols due to the coronavirus. 
Meanwhile, DeMar DeRozan is in California to be with his family following the death of his father. So they'll get a little help from the Austin Spurs. Tonight's game at the Chesapeake Energy Arena tips off at 7 o'clock. We've got highlights for you tomorrow morning on Good Morning San Antonio. We don't even know who the starting lineup is going to be. So we'll, that's like great anticipation just to see who the starts tonight. There you Fun go. Fun to see. Yeah. So. 442, 64 degrees. Well, after the winter storm last week, you may be thinking about buying a portable generator for your home. How to pick the right one, that's next. Also coming up this morning, more details on Bruce Springsteen's scheduled appearance in court today following a DWI arrest last November. In this morning's GMA First Look, the boss about to face the music. I come home in the morning. In just hours, legendary singer Bruce Springsteen will appear virtually before a judge to address the federal charges stemming from his November DWI arrest. According to the police report, the New Jersey native was at his home state's Gateway National Recreation Area in Sandy Hook when he was spotted taking a shot of tequila as he was preparing to ride off on his motorcycle. Between red and blue, between servant and citizen. News of the boss's arrest came earlier this month, just days after Springsteen appeared in his first ever commercial, a Super Bowl ad for Jeep. The car company swiftly pulling the spot from circulation. Today's hearing comes two days after Spotify released premiere episodes of Renegades Born in the USA, a podcast co-hosted by Springsteen and former President Barack Obama. That's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. Welcome back. It's 446. After spending a day or more in bone-chilling temperatures inside your house, you may be thinking about a generator. I definitely am. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz has some important things you should know before you buy one. As millions shivered in the dark and icy cold, something else was heating up. Sales of portable generators. I see your okay. elves. Um, what kind of bear? Um, we are bear. Uh, we sold out by Tuesday afternoon. Matt Coleman says his Northern Tool and Equipment store even ran on generator to stay open last week. They'll restock now as people prepare for the next time the power gets zapped. When you're buying a generator, size does matter. To power your essentials through a storm like we had, you're going to have to have enough wattage. A lot of people, whenever they have the generator, they, they don't want just the heater because then they'll be sitting in the dark. The phone won't be charging. I mean, can't get a hold of loved ones. The recommendation is at least a 4,000 or above. That way you're covered. Expect to pay about $500 for a 4,000 watt generator, around 1,000 for 8,000 watts for more power. Generators can save lives, but most run on gasoline and carbon monoxide fumes can be deadly. It should be placed about 20 feet away from the house. It has to be well ventilated. You cannot have it in your home. Do not have it indoors. Keep it away from the doors. A safety feature to look for, an automatic shutoff in case CO gas builds up to dangerous levels. Some are even designed to emit less carbon monoxide to begin with. Once you have a generator, Coleman says maintenance is key, or else, like a lot of people last week, you'll still be out in the cold. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. A little generator tip for you. If you get a generator, make sure you have the fuel to put in the generator. Yes. Don't like walk out to your garage and pick up the gas can and go, oh, and then you what do I do now? Are, you know, just, you can't drive because the roads are all, just trying to help. you know, not dangerous. I mean, not safe out there. But Samuel, thank God the roads have cleared since last week. Any yes. accidents this morning? Well, the biggest uh, incident we have again is here north of uh, New Braunfels here on 35 uh, northbound. And so that's uh, I had a couple of incidents here uh, overnight and 35 is still closed. Uh, just across uh, the Hayes County line, but that uh, backup go extends down into uh, Comal County. So if you are someone who uh, heads up to uh, San Marcos or, or even Austin uh, on a on a morning or you, you have some business up there, that's something to uh, watch out for. You might want to uh, navigate around that this morning. So we'll keep an eye on that for you. Uh, moving back here into town, the only real thing is some construction going on, and this is 1604-281. All of the construction, right over there, Justin? All of the construction was um, uh, postponed last week, of course, because of uh, the weather, uh, but they're trying to uh, ramp up some of these projects, and that includes the 1604 and 281 projects, so you'll be noticing more construction in and around town. But looking uh, from uh, Seguin, uh, excuse me, uh, Seguin from I-10, 30 minutes, 26 minutes 
uh, from New Braunfels to uh, downtown San Antonio. So that time looks good as well. And looking at Transguide, not seeing too many issues. Again, some construction here and there, folks. But uh, things are going well so far, except if you're north of New Braunfels on 35. Justin, I think that monster energy drink you just drank is getting to you. You're throwing your remote. Oh, you're so excited. You can't hold on to this thing. These are slippery. I'm telling you, you got to be really yep. careful. It's like a bar of yep. soap for you guys. <laughs> just you got to hold on to the stuff in the back, you know, like. Sorry. The, Sorry, Samuel. Oh, no. You didn't break it, did you? No, no, no. I think it still works. So there goes the forecast. Well, you broke it. <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, cloudy skies right now. We've got uh, a little bit of fog in spots, but not here in San Antonio. And as uh, we look at the temperature, 64 degrees, south southwest chilly winds at about 9 miles per hour, gusting to 17. It's humid, it's breezy, and it's warm. That wind's going to help us out a little bit, I think, with the fog. We haven't seen much here. And yes, it does work, by the way, so we're good. Uh, 64 hello to 61 Bernie stage, 62 Rio Medina, 62 right now in Hondo. Cloudy there. There is a little bit of fog as you go out west, 58 in New Valley, 54 Carrizo Springs. And that's an area where... Visibility is starting to come down. So it's down to a mile and three quarters in U Valley, three quarters of a mile in Carrizo Springs. Not much fog again here in San Antonio. We'll keep an eye on that number, but so far so good. You look at the dew points here, jumping up into the 60s. This is more spring like weather, really. And uh, you got dew points in the mid to upper 60s here, closer to the coast. That's quite a bit of humidity. And uh, it's going to be a sticky day, but it only lasts one day because we've got a cold front up here across parts of North Texas and actually you can pick it out pretty clearly here with the uh, dew points very very dry north of that boundary. No rain at least not yet. This front may try to generate a little bit of rain as it gets down into deep south Texas but uh, nothing on the map just yet and the temperatures are cooler behind the front 49 Midland 45 Lubbock 38 in Amarillo. We'll feel some of that cooler air tomorrow. In fact, we probably won't get out of the 50s tomorrow so that'll be kind of the the bigger change. Here's the future cast. And it shows by 5 o'clock. Uh, the cloudiness will probably melt away a little bit. Uh, mostly cloudy much of today, but some sun this afternoon, enough to boost the temperatures into the upper 70s. Front comes through. It doesn't generate much, but it could uh, produce a few showers. I think our better chances of rain actually come late tomorrow as some upper level, upper level energy moves in. And so we'll get some scattered showers Thursday, Thursday night, and maybe into Friday morning. And then the rain chances sort of stick with us. We get an active pattern that moves east, but we've still got some lingering energy Saturday into Sunday. Another system comes in from the north and west that produces more scattered showers Sunday and more so Monday helps to drive another front through. So rain chances stay with us, which isn't really a bad thing. We, we can use the rain in the meantime today, cloudy, foggy to start, maybe some sun this afternoon up into the mid to upper 70s. And uh, going 57 tomorrow, so that's the big change with a 40% chance of rain mainly in the afternoon. 59 Friday, some morning showers, 30% chance of rain both Saturday and Sunday. We get another front Monday, and that brings some more good chances of rain. 40% shot there on Monday, and maybe some lingering rain into Tuesday as well, guys. Lots of clouds, but much needed rain. Yes. Thank you, Justin. 453, 64 degrees. Up next, the Golden Globes are getting an upgrade, plus more details on Hillary Clinton's efforts to put out a new book. Welcome back, 456, a first for the annual Golden Globe Awards. Plus, Hillary Clinton is set to put out a new book. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. It's an award show first because of the pandemic. Sunday night's Golden Globes will be hosted live from two coasts by Tina Fey and Amy Poehler. Tina's going to be in the new in New York. I'm going to be in California, and we're going to take full advantage of how fun it is to do award shows on your computer. And while this is a first, the pair are veterans. This will be their fourth time hosting. The winners are expected to be at their homes around the world. The Golden Globes air live Sunday night on NBC. She's been a first lady, a senator, secretary of state, now Hillary Clinton getting a new title, mystery novel writer. She's teaming up with author Louise Penny for a book called State of Terror, which we're told will be about a secretary of state trying to solve a wave of terrorist attacks. You'll be able to read it October 12th. Mandy Moore's new baby already has a winning personality trait, punctuality. She shared the news of the birth on Instagram, writing that Gus was born right on his due date, much to the delight of his parents. It's the first child for Moore and her husband, musician Taylor Goldsmith. And happy birthday to straight out of Compton star O'Shea Jackson Jr. He's 30 today. You yap worse than six barbers. While Uncle June, soprano star Dominic Chianese, is 90. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News.
Los Angeles. 457, 64 degrees. Still had the latest on the Capitol attack. Security failures as lawmakers get set for another round of security officials questioning today. Plus, you want to try out some Samsung's newest foldable phones? We've got more details ahead on Tech Bytes. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And making headlines this morning, a man in the hospital following a drive-by shooting on the southwest side overnight. Details are coming up. Here on the Hill, it's day two of testimony about that deadly Capital Six insurrection. A Mike Ajachi in Washington coming up, you'll hear from even more officials who claim they too never knew about the threat of violence. It feels warm outside, 64 degrees. It's kind of muggy outside too. Justin will let us know how, why there's rain. Why there's rain or if there's rain, it'll be raining. He'll talk about it. <laughs> Good morning. It's Wednesday, February 24th. I'm okay. I just keep going. Just you know what? Rock you know what on. it was? I it's because it's karma. I made fun of Justin earlier for drinking a. Do monster. you really need me to stand here <laughs> while you do all this? I mean, I'm going to take a nap. Please. It's, it's a philosophical question. Why does rain exist? Why are we here, Justin? We're gonna go deep, deep into all this. Uh, looking at the forecast this morning, if you're heading to the bus stop, it's uh, not cold outside. 62 is what we're thinking this morning. Foggy, humid. So far, the fog hasn't really materialized here in San Antonio, but there are some spots where visibility is starting to come down. Winds out of the south, 5 to 15. We'll be up around 76 this afternoon. Warm and mostly cloudy. Uh, it should turn out to be another nice day. It, it will get a little bit cooler tomorrow once we get a cold front through here. At the moment, temperatures are still in the mid-60s. I mean, this is, this is balmy weather here. 61 Comfort, 61 Bandera, 62 in Hondo. Everybody at this point is pretty much looking at cloudy skies. And I mentioned some of that fog starting to show up. Places like Rock Springs, Uvalde, Carrizo Springs. We've seen the visibility kind of jump up and down there. But uh, those are some spots where uh, the fog may become a little bit thicker. And we'll see if we get some here in San Antonio. Otherwise, forecasts, again, uh, mid to upper 70s today. There will be some sun this afternoon. But as we get into tonight, cold front sites do rain chances uh, tomorrow, especially tomorrow afternoon. We'll jump into that forecast here in just a few minutes. But let's get over to Samuel now with a look at your time safe for traffic. Hey, good morning, uh, Justin. Good morning, everyone uh, out there. Still have this issue here on 35 uh, near to Comal and Hayes County lines. So let's take a closer uh, look at that. 35 closed on the other uh, on the other side of the county line but looks like stuff is starting to improve a little bit but still if you need to head uh, northbound to 35 towards San Marcos and Austin that's something to uh, look out for but across the rest of the region things are looking fine uh, 27 minutes on 35 coming into downtown San Antonio 25 minutes on I-10 coming in from Bernie 20 minutes on 90 you know, coming in from Castroville. And here's a look at uh, Transkai. This is a 281 at uh, Winding Way. Had some construction there earlier in 35 at Topper Wine. Looking fine this morning as well. We'll have another update coming up. Sarah, David, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. New this morning, San Antonio police are trying to find those responsible for a drive by shooting overnight. It happened just after 11 p.m. in the 8200 block of Great Spirit Drive near Old Pearsall Road. It's on the city's southwest side. Police say a 26 year old man was outside a home when someone inside a vehicle drove by and fired about eight shots. The man was hit once in the hip and taken to the hospital in stable condition. Everyone else inside the house, police say, are okay right now. SAPD does not have a description of that vehicle or suspects. Four board members of ERCOT, the Electric Luria Liability Council of Texas, will resign today during a board meeting. That's according to a notice to the Public Utility Commission. The move comes after more than 4 million customers lost power during last week's winter weather event. ERCOT manages and operates the electricity grid that covers much of Texas. All of the board members stepping down have been under fire for, among other things, living outside of Texas. President Joe Biden is planning on making a stop in the Lone Star State this week amid the aftermath of last week's winter weather. The president and first lady are expected to travel to Houston on Friday. The White House says the president will meet with local leaders to discuss the winter storm relief efforts and progress toward recovery. The president also plans to visit a COVID-19 health center where vaccines are being distributed. 
Just like so many in our viewing area, the San Antonio Humane Society has experienced some severe water damage from several busted pipes. Both of the nonprofit's locations, its main campus on Fredericksburg Road and its Brooks Spay and Neuter Clinic on the city's south side had split pipes from last week's severe cold winter weather. The no kill animal shelters Brooks Clinic had so much severe damage. The staff from that campus is working out of the main campus until the damage can be repaired. Just like everybody else, I mean, this leak is going to it's going to be costly um, to our organization. And so water coming out in any possible you know, in any way um, is, is damaging. And so we're looking to the community to see if there's support. The Humane Society says they are still waiting from contractors to learn how much the damage will cost, but will most likely be several thousand dollars to repair. The nonprofit says, thankfully, their main campus at houses their animals didn't lose power for long periods of time, and the animals were kept dry, warm, and safe. If anyone in the community would like to donate, just head to sahumane.org to help out. Today will be day two of testimony about the deadly riots at the Capitol, and so far police officers have answered questions about a lack of planning. ABC's News' Aike Gochi joins us from Washington with the latest. This morning on the Hill, more testimony about the deadly January 6th Capitol riot. The hearing began Tuesday at the very scene of the deadly insurrection. Capitol Police officers like Captain Carnesha Mendoza recalling that deadly day. I received chemical burns to my face that still have not healed to this day. As an American and as an Army veteran, it's sad to see us attacked by our fellow citizens. Three officers in charge of protecting the Capitol pointing fingers at the FBI and other agencies, telling Congress they were never warned about the waves of insurrectionists who came to unleash violence in the name of Donald Trump. None of the intelligence we received predicted what actually occurred. We properly planned for a mass demonstration with possible violence. What we got was a military-style coordinated assault. The highlight of the day, a bombshell report from the FBI Norfolk office. According to a statement from the FBI, a warning was sent to Capitol Police officers on January 5th, warning of right-wing extremists preparing to, quote, fight a war. <laughs> Former Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sund, who resigned two days after the riot, telling Congress he didn't see that warning until this week and that it was sent in an email, an email that was never seen. If we have information that's coming in the day before a major event uh, that, that has that level of specificity, that it could get a little more attention than you know, just being handled either through an email or electronic uh, uh, format. This morning, ABC News obtaining a copy of testimony you'll hear today from another Capitol official who'll go on the record claiming he too was never informed of the planned violence. Brett Blanton, the architect of the Capitol who sits on a four-person Capitol Police Board, he'll tell Congress he was never briefed on those credible threats. And the House Appropriations Committee, they're going to meet later today to talk about emergency spending for funds related to the Capitol riot. So that'll include everything from restoration efforts to the Capitol itself, security concerns, and even counseling services for everyone involved. In Washington, I'm Micah Jachi, ABC News. Back here at home, transforming lives and helping people achieve the life they deserve. That's been the goal of Restore Education. This morning, the San Antonio nonprofit will host their virtual policy forum, which will focus on the needs of education and workforce development. Our Stephen Cavazos is live and shares a San Antonio mother's journey to achieve her dreams. Good morning, Stephen. Well, good morning, David, Sarah. Now, well, Priscilla Ibada is a mother of three who has put two of her children through college with their third one expected to head to Texas State later this fall, but she says when it came to her own education, that took a back seat. Now, Ibotta tells us that she dropped out of high school when she became pregnant with her first child, but found out and found it harder to return to the classroom. She says her goals were actually put on hold so she could help her three children achieve their dreams. Now, she tells us she did work odd in jobs just to get by, but as her children got older, she began to realize there was more she could do for her life. I could never go any further than that. So I was never in a career situation. It was always just a job to, you know, pay the bills. Ibotta says that when she discovered Restore Education, she says she had the support of all three of her children and was able to get her GED, and that's changed her life for the better. Now, don't forget that virtual policy form is going to be happening later this morning at 8, and we have a link that's already posted on our website. That's at ksat.com. 
And coming up later on GMSA, we'll hear more from Ibotta, who tells us her journey for a better life isn't over. David, Sarah? Thank you, Stephen. Congratulations to her. Well done. 509 and 64 degrees. Still ahead, we'll tell you about a special Samsung service that lets you try out its new foldable phone. Or, as David calls it, a flip phone. The same thing. Right. Hi. You Ooh, know what? Flips. I actually agree with you on this one, David. I still got one of those. <laughs> And welcome back. It's 513. This morning, we're telling you the story of the first black San Antonio police officer who was tragically killed in the line of duty. It's been nearly eight decades since the death of Officer Julius Alberson. Digital journalist Jacob Rodriguez has this story. 500 East Commerce Street, still alive with business, is not so different from how it looked on December 4th, 1941. That night, Julius Alberson, a black patrolman with the San Antonio Police Department, was shot and killed with his own gun while breaking up a disturbance at a local club. The 29-year-old had been on the force for nine months at the time of his death. City policeman slain at dance was on the front page of the San Antonio Express News the following day. I think also for the African-American community, it had to have been a tragedy because you can imagine that Officer Alberson um, was a sense of pride because he came through the school. He took all of the tests that were required of an officer. Questions still loom today about Alberson's death. A revolver disappeared, 10 soldiers were detained. But the mystery remained. Who really pulled the trigger and killed Alberson? Census records reviewed by KSAT showed that Alberson was from Bryan, Texas and moved to San Antonio's west side when he was a child. He was the president of his class at Douglas High School, an African-American high school, and graduated with a four-year degree from Wilberforce College in Ohio. Alberson had a promising future in the community. He was somebody that was emerging as a sense of inspiration for the community and to be struck down in this way and for there to be a lack of justice on the other end and to have a family uprooted because a child was very young. This was just a horrible tragedy all around. No one was ever formally convicted for the murder of Alberson. Lattimore attributes this to race relations, World War II, and sympathies for soldiers during the war effort. Mr. Alberson's a hero in the line of duty. Uh, and yet, he wasn't treated by the judicial system in that way, in the way that traditionally happens. And I think that's the sad part of the story. For an in-depth look at Alberson's life and his trial, visit ksat.com. Jacob Rodriguez, KSAT 12 News. It is 515 and 64 degrees. Still coming up, the details on Samsung's newest service that lets you try out its newest foldable phone for 100 days. Black psoriasis, the burning, itching, the pain. With Tremphia, adults with moderate to severe plaque psoriasis can uncover clearer skin and improve symptoms at 16 weeks. Serious allergic reactions may occur. Tremphia may increase your risk of infections and lower your ability to fight them. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, or if you had a vaccine or plan to. Tremphia. Emerge Tremphiant. Janssen can help you explore cost support options. Mr. Buble, you can't keep breaking in here. Bubbly just came up with bubbly bounce. A little kick of caffeine. Exactly what I need to fix these. Yeah, Buble bounce. -y. No calories, no sweetness, just a kick of caffeine. Hey, fellas, we've got to talk. Mm -hmm. It's about your food. It has spray on flavor and powdered meat. It's time for fresh food that belongs in the fridge next to our food. Now, who's hungry? Fresh pet. In today's Tech Bites, Samsung is giving you more time to fall in love with its newest foldable phones. The company just launched a buy and try program. Instead of just 15 days, customers now have 100 days to return the 5G versions of its Galaxy flip phones for a full refund. 
North America's oldest Chinatown neighborhood has a new home. The historic section of San Francisco has been recreated in Minecraft. Students and recent grads joined forces to preserve the area's history. The virtual version helps replace walking tours canceled by the pandemic. Finally, the next generation postal service delivery truck. Its safety features include cameras for a 360 degree view, a collision avoidance system with visual and audio warnings and automatic braking, and it can be fitted to run on electricity. They should be on the road in 2023. Those are your Tech Bites. Those postal trucks look cute. Cute. That's what you were thinking too. Uh, yeah, I had, had the same idea. Can't wait to see those cute postal trucks. Out <laughs> Speaking of trucks. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if their horns go beep beep. Beep. Right. Oh. Yeah, they kind of have like a big uh, a windshield there. So it'll be interesting to see those on the roads. I uh, still have uh, some delays around this uh, construction site. This is east of 1604 and I-10 at uh, FM 1518. So you can see traffic down to uh, 50 miles per hour. Still have the incident up to the uh, north here. This is on 35 uh, near the Kamal Hayes County line. Uh, 35 closed in Hayes County, but we also had a crash uh, in Comal County at York Creek. So that's accounting for uh, that delay. So uh, watch out for that. But if uh, once you, uh, before you get to uh, New Braunfels on uh, 35, still the normal times, 19 minutes between uh, New Braunfels and uh, 410 in San Antonio. But again, north of there is where you run into problems on 35. Here is Transguide 281 at almost traffic flowing well, as is 281 at uh, Hildebrand. And let's get one more here, 410 at Starcrest, looking well. Just a contrast to last week when all these roads were closed and ice covered and everything, guys. <laughs> Justin, I just asked you, okay, so we're yep. done with freezes. It's not going to happen in March. And now you pull up this 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 little date here. I, I credit you. I was, yeah. That it was a good question. <laughs> we have the graphic in the system. Let's show it. Uh, so the average last freeze, what do we got here in San Antonio? It's typically anywhere from February 24th to February 28th. So we're, we're right there. Now that's the average. So keep in mind, we can still see freezes into March. In fact, our latest freeze here in San Antonio, it was April 3rd. That was back in 1987. So if you are gonna start planting new stuff because it, it died during the freeze, just know we still could see a freeze. Something to keep in mind also is we could see a, a hot summer, which can do damage too. Fall is typically your best time to plant, but you, it, just something to keep in the back of your mind with uh, the fact that we could still see a freeze. And it uh, typically takes until March for places like Kerrville and Fredericksburg to see their last freeze. Temperatures this morning, awful warm. 64 degrees at the airport, 61 Bernie State, 61 Bandera, 61 Kerrville, 61 in Comfort. Uh, 55 Carrizo Springs, 58 in Uvalde. And we're starting to see a little bit of fog out to the west. We'll show you the visibility here in just a second. Here in San Antonio, visibility is fine. And you'll see temperatures here in the low to mid 60s at most spots, calm winds. Winds are lightening up just a little bit, so that may help some fog development. But so far, you get nothing here in town. Places like Rock Springs and Uvalde, though, starting to see these numbers come down. Creosote Springs has had a little bit of fog, too. And uh, looking at the dew points, it's no surprise here. Moisture has spread into the area. Dew points are in the 60s, so that's when you start to feel it. That gets us into the muggy category. We'll feel that most of today, I think. And the dew point will fall off tonight once we get a front through here. And then build back over the weekend. We'll get another front on Monday. So this uh, also shows you, illustrates the idea that we're in sort of an active pattern here. Forecast temperatures today into the 70s. It will be a warm one, 77 here in town. I think a lot of spots will be in the 70s this afternoon. Uh, once the clouds burn off, we'll get a front tonight. That slides through. That gives us a chance for a few showers, but the better chance of rain is going to come tomorrow afternoon. This is around 6 o'clock. Scattering of showers, even more coverage as we go into Thursday night and maybe even Friday morning. Down the line, on Friday, I think it's mostly a morning thing, but uh, by the weekend, there's still some energy hanging back. So some showers, isolated showers on Saturday. Sunday, another system comes in, scattered showers on Sunday afternoon. And into Monday, we'll get another front. We'll have energy around, probably our best chance of rain uh, on Monday. So again, it, it stays fairly active. Temperature-wise today, again, mid uh, upper 70s and uh, Looking forward here, 57 tomorrow. It's quite a bit cooler behind the front, 59 Friday. And you see the rain chances all the way into next week uh, with 70s over the weekend. I don't question anything about your weather forecast, but I think it's a little too soon to be showing that last 
freeze because we. Oh, I didn't. I didn't like that it was April 1987 and what just happened from the 1985. Well, it's a little a early. We just got over it. Yeah, yeah, we just got over it. Could have waited a week. Well, we got to be cautious about it. I just want people to know if they're planting. It's my fault. I asked the question. Still a chance. Sorry, sorry, guys. <laughs> Five twenty-four, and it's sixty-four degrees. Up next in your morning spotlight, a first look at a new documentary featuring Tina Turner. My mother, she used to sit in the window of the kitchen when she was making dinner on Sundays. I used to just watch her. One day she wasn't in that window. She was never in it again. Here's your first look at Tina. The intimate documentary about Tina Turner includes previously unreleased footage, audio tapes, personal photos, and interviews, including with the music icon herself. Tina premieres on HBO March 27th. The uh, 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 amount of pain that is that is caused by stuttering is not determined on, on age, but how long you go without knowing that Stuttering is okay. Millions of people stutter, including children who face bullying and societal stigma. The documentary My Beautiful Stutter looks at an arts-based program, the Stuttering Association for the Young, and five kids who learn it's all right to stutter. Paul Rudd and Mariska Hargitay are among the executive producers of the film, which debuts March 11th on Discovery+. Plus. In Hollywood, I'm David Danny. 528, 64 degrees. Well, still ahead, the latest on coronavirus relief efforts as President Biden talks about mailing out masks and lawmakers expect a vote on a bill soon. Good morning. It's February 23rd. Can you believe that? And it's 531. If your alarm's going off and you're thinking, how cold is it going to be today? No, it's going to be warm. Today. It's actually muggy out there, Justin. Yeah. It is. It feels a lot like spring, really. We've got temperatures in the mid-60s, a little bit of fog out there. Humidity has, has moved in. It's going to be sticky most of today. Looking at the pollen count, yesterday's numbers, no big deal. Mold is a low at 180. Mountain Cedar's low at 10. We really want to lose Mountain Cedar. I, any day now. Any day now, it should be missing from the pollen count. We'll keep you posted there. 61 degrees, Comfort. 61, Curvo. 62, Rio Medina. 65, in Castroville. 64 over that Randolph. We haven't had a whole lot of issues with fog here in town, but there is some fog trying to develop out west. Places like Rock Springs, Uvalde, Carrizo Springs, all places where visibility is starting to go down. And I think we're going to see more of that as the morning goes on. So far, though, hasn't again been a big issue here. Mostly cloudy skies, noontime. Uh, we may see a little bit more sun this afternoon, which would boost those temperatures into the mid to upper 70s. But this uh, warm, humid weather is not going to last because the front comes through tonight. That brings cooler weather for tomorrow. In fact, we'll probably stay in the 50s on your Thursday with some rain chances. We'll talk all about that forecast here in just a couple of minutes. But let's get over to Samuel now and check in on those roadways. Oh, good morning, Justin. Good morning, everyone. Still have this issue uh, north of uh, New Braunfels here on uh, 35, but things mostly in the San Antonio area are fine. So let's take a closer look here. This is near the Hayes Comal County line. We've had this uh, for the past uh, several hours here. A uh, 35 is closed just south of San Marcos, but we also had a crash here in Comal County north of New Braunfels. So uh, that's causing a bit of a backup here. Three mile backup at least here on 35 and then this closure stretch is two miles. So that's that's something to keep in mind. If you're coming from the San Antonio area, you might want to take a 10 over to 123. I know that's a bit of a, a detour, but if you want to avoid sitting in this, uh, that might be the most efficient way for going uh, north to Austin or San Marcos or Austin, I should say. Now, looking at the other travel times around the region, mostly uh, green. We still have this little bit of yellow, but that's common here. So 29 minutes on 281 coming in from Belverde, uh, 29 minutes on 37 coming in from the Pleasanton area. 16 minutes coming in on 35 from Lytle. Here's a look at the trans sky. Just give you a look at the conditions. We have a stall vehicle there, 281 in Bassey, uh, but otherwise things looking fine in the San Antonio region. Sarah, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. Well, new this morning, San Antonio police are investigating what may be a case of self-defense, a stabbing that sent one man to a hospital. It happened in an apartment on the northwest side in the 100 block of Chantel Road. 
Our Katrina Weber is live there with a report. Now, Katrina, one man went to the hospital, but we understand there actually were two people who were cut with a knife. Well, that's right. Police told us a man who lives here was cut on his shoulder, but refused a ride to the hospital. There was a second man, an apparent unwelcome visitor, who also was stabbed and did go to the hospital by ambulance. The police say that uh, they got the call before three this morning. All of this happening during a disagreement at the De Chantel Apartments. A man who lives here told officers that he got into that dispute with another man who was visiting. At some point, police say the visitor cut the other man on his shoulder. And then that man who lives here pulled out his own knives and stabbed the visitor repeatedly, according to police. Officers say that the visitor had serious injuries, possibly even life-threatening. Again, the man who lives here refused that ride to the hospital in the ambulance. There's no word on whether police plan to charge him with anything. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. The Bear County Sheriff's Office wants to know if last week's winter weather event is to blame for dozens of deaths. Sheriff Javier Salazar says a special investigative unit will look into 15 known death cases so far. That happened since the beginning of that storm until now. Now, this new team will include a homicide cold case detective, a sergeant from their CSI unit, a public integrity investigator, and another investigator that's a retired FBI agent. Salazar says he plans to issue some grand jury subpoenas to CPS Energy to determine if outages were a factor in at least two deaths. This week, health experts are projecting that the new COVID-19 variants may fuel a spring surge. The federal government says it's working to pass a COVID-19 relief bill. CNN's Britt Conroy reports. I wake up every day to get through the day. It, everything is just, I have to get through this day. Don't worry about the next one. I blame myself. Mm -hmm. David blames himself. The doctor blamed himself. Gigi Morse died from COVID-19. She was six years old. One of the more than 500,000 lives lost since the pandemic began. Still, experts like Dr. Anthony Fauci are cautiously optimistic. The infections per day are going down. But there are fears of another surge. A new report from the Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy warns a more contagious variant could spike cases beginning in March. And the report suggests speeding up the vaccinations by skipping second doses for now. It's also crucial to practice safety measures we know work, like social distancing and wearing masks. President Joe Biden says the government will probably start sending out masks in the mail. We can't pull back on that and get complacent. Complacency is what Houston doctor Joseph Veron worries about too. This is COVID. This is what COVID looks inside the lung. He's worked every day for almost a year now. I'm exhausted, you know, I'm tired. I mean, it's day in and day out. In the meantime, lawmakers are trying to come to some kind of agreement on a COVID-19 relief bill. With news from the House Majority Leader that they plan to vote on the $1.9 trillion plan Friday. I'm Britt Conway reporting. A month after the GameStop trading frenzy, the company is looking for a new CFO. GameStop says executive president and chief financial officer Jim Bell will resign March 26th. Reddit users caused a massive spike and later a drop in GameStop stock. The company announced last fall it was planning on closing up to 450 stores around the world. And GameStop's most recent reported quarter posted a net loss of $18.8 million. 538 and 64 degrees. Coming up next, the latest on Tiger Woods after the golf legend suffered a compound fracture in his legs during a rollover crash yesterday morning. First, take a look outside with live cam. 64 degrees at 538 this morning. It's a little muggy out there, and Justin says we can expect rain maybe through next week. He'll tell, talk to us about that when we come back. Now to the latest on Tiger Woods and the injuries he suffered in yesterday morning's crash. Doctors released a statement overnight saying Woods needed surgery on his right leg and ankle. ABC's Kenneth Moten has this story. This morning, new details about the injuries Tiger Woods suffered in that violent crash in Southern California. Overnight, Woods Foundation put out a statement saying he's awake and responsive, but suffering from serious injuries, including compound fractures to both upper and lower parts of his right leg, which had a rod inserted, and his shattered foot and ankle are being held together with screws and pins. 
it's very fortunate that Mr. Woods um, was able to uh, come out of this alive. Deputy Carlos Gonzalez was the first person on the scene. He says Woods was lucid and calm. The fact that he was wearing a seatbelt, um, I, I would say that it greatly increased the likelihood that it saved his life. Deputy Gonzalez at first didn't recognize Woods. I asked him what his name was. Um, he told me his name was Tiger, and at that moment I immediately recognized him. His SUV left mangled after rolling downhill multiple times, traveling hundreds of feet. Rescuers used an axe to break through the windshield and free woods. After medics rushed the 45-year-old to the hospital, a crane hoisted the SUV upright. On the vehicle's side, the words Genesis Invitational, a golf tournament, was hosted last week. He didn't play in the tournament because he's recovering from his fifth back surgery. Woods saying this on Sunday. Seven weeks from today, final round of the Masters. You're going to be there. God, I hope so. <laughs> I got to get there first. Well, you feel um, like you a lot of a lot of space on you know my, my surgeons and uh, my doctors and my therapists. Overnight, former President Obama tweeting, "Here's to a speedy recovery for the goat of golf. If we've learned anything over the years, is to never count Tiger out." Former President Trump, who awarded was the Presidential Medal of Freedom, saying Tiger will be back. The sheriff in L.A. says there was no sign that Woods was impaired, but the sheriff added it appears the vehicle may have been speeding. And investigators say they'll look to whether Woods was on the phone or was otherwise distracted. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Now 543 and it's a warm 64 degrees if you're just waking up. Up next, job hunting during the pandemic can be a difficult task. We'll have some creative ways to make it a little easier. Welcome back. It's 545. The latest jobs report showed an uptick in the number of Americans filing for unemployment benefits. And Americans trying to get back to work are facing new challenges in the search process. ABC's Elizabeth Scholze explains what job seekers can do to set themselves apart. For 26-year-old Poonam Desai, job hunting during the pandemic is a full-time job. I've written hundreds of cover letters, redone my resume hundreds of times. Her contract as a consultant ended before the pandemic hit, and now she's among an estimated 10 million Americans searching for work. It seems like a million more people competing for every same position. Her biggest frustration, not hearing back from employers. It kind of is dehumanizing. It makes you feel like you're not even worth a simple email. High unemployment and remote working are making it harder and more important for applicants to find a way to stand out. One way to make an impression, play up your skills that are attractive in a work from home environment. You want somebody who can stay on task, so I'm detail oriented, I can stay focused, you know, self motivator, self scheduler. Next, practice doing virtual interviews with friends. Making sure that you're engaged the entire time. Sometimes you need to be a little bit more animated for that to have to cross on camera. And finally, consider applying for jobs outside of your industry that use the same skills. The hospitality, food service, and entertainment industries are still shedding jobs, but sectors like delivery and construction are hiring back workers. If I was a server, could I go do something for Amazon in, in delivery or Uber driving or Walmart e-commerce or Target e-commerce? I think there are lots of transferable skills and they may want to pivot back and that's completely explainable down the road. Matthew Bakley was laid off in September. Dealing with COVID on its own is a struggle in and of itself for most people. And to add um, a job search on top of that um, is quite a stress load. Soon, he noticed a trend in job postings. The posting may say that it's got a specific location, but in reality, they're open to having a remote worker. He landed a new job this month after connecting with a former colleague. One part of the search, he says, hasn't changed during the pandemic. It holds true that your networking is going to be your easiest way to, to land a new gig. And one final tip. During remote job interviews, look directly at the camera instead of at the interviewer. A little bit of eye contact, even if it's through a computer screen, can go a long way. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. I want to tell you about some pets who need homes over at the San Antonio Humane Society. Bella is a sweet four-year-old terrier American pit bull mix. She loves to play and has a cute little smile. No, oh, Bella, and this is uh, Pollux, one, almost one years old. He loves to cuddle and sunbathe every chance he gets. Looking forward to that sunbathing thing. <laughs> that means it's warm. San Antonio Humane Society is still conducting a no contact adoption process where everything is done online and interviews are done over the phone. If you'd like some more information, you can visit sahumane.org. 
They're located 4804 Fredericksburg Road, and you can call 210-226-7461 if you'd like some more information. I was actually there yesterday uh, getting a tour of their new facility, which opened in October. It is beautiful, and I look forward to telling that story later on GMSA later in the week. Was Pollux out sunbathing? I, I didn't see Pollux. Like that, uh, getting warm. But they have all these, these new like <laughs> sunrooms for the cats, so Ooh. it's very Ooh. cool. Uh, Samuel, you are standing by. Anything happening on the roads? Well, we still have that situation up uh, north of uh, New Braunfels, but looking here in town, this is I-10 at Frio, and you can see traffic is uh, kind of building here as we were about 10 minutes before 6 o'clock. So uh, definitely a sign that uh, things are uh, returning to normal, especially after last week. And looking at I-10, if you're coming in from Bernie to downtown, 24 minutes each direction. And then once you're inside 1604, uh, 13 minutes going eastbound and 11 minutes heading out westbound. So uh, that's something to look out for. And here's what we mentioned too, the situation at 35 uh, between uh, Posey Road and Center Point Road. That's in Hayes County, but that backup, as we've mentioned, does extend into Comal County. Uh, so that's something to uh, look out for uh, this morning if you're heading uh, to the north. That's adding, for instance, if you're coming from town, it's adding about 45 minutes to your travel time. Uh, from uh, San Antonio up to Austin. So you will want to have to navigate around that. And 123 looks like the option if you're coming from down here, guys. Yesterday, speaking of sunbathing, my dogs are out while I was working in the yard. They were sunbathing. <laughs> they enjoyed the sun. But Justin, pretty feeling sorry for parents having to figure out is it going to be warm today or is it going to be cold today? That's fair. How do you dress your child? That's fair. I think we've we've covered kind of the full spectrum here between cold and hot. Uh, today is going to be on the warm side. It's the short sleeves for sure this afternoon. And what about those rain chances? Do you need to grab the umbrella today? No, not today, but tomorrow. Yes, about a 40% chance on your Thursday. And look at rain chances. They continue all the way through Tuesday. So we're going to go into an active pattern here. It's not going to be raining all day every day, but there will be scattered showers, especially as we get into the weekend and early next week. Right now, we're looking at 64 degrees at the airport, cloudy skies, southwesterly winds at about eight miles per hour. As long as winds stay up a little bit, we're not going to be looking at a lot of fog here in San Antonio. And so far that has not been the case. 64 Bull Party, 61 Bernie State, 61 in Kerrville, 63 Kenya Lake. Everybody's in the 60s. It's a warm, humid morning. Some 50s out west, though, 58 U Valley, 57 Rock Springs, 57 in Carrizo Springs, where it is a little bit cooler and those temperatures are meeting up with the dew point. That's where we're starting to get some fog down to about a mile and three quarters in Rock Springs, half a mile in U Valley and five miles in Carrizo Springs. That number has actually come up a little bit. Everybody else is doing OK with regards to fog as it stands right now. Dew points. Yeah, they're really jumping up. We've got low 60s here. That puts us in the muggy category. It feels very different outside, uh, especially considering what we've been through here. And that moisture is surging north out ahead of a cold front. So dew points are now in the 50s around Dallas. But you can pick out where the cold front is just with these dew points. Very dry north of that boundary. Dew points in the 20s up there in the Texas Panhandle. Even though we do have a front, there's no rain to speak of. It's not going to be until tonight that we'll start to see some rain with this frontal boundary which right now is moving through the Abilene area down through Midland and the temperatures in the 30s and 40s behind it. We'll see some cooler air tomorrow, probably highs in the 50s on your Thursday. That front makes it here, I'd say sometime tonight, as it does. Uh, we'll see some showers with the front, but the better chance of rain is actually going to come tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. We'll see a scattering of showers around the area, maybe even a, a couple of rumbles of thunder, although it looks like this is mostly just a showery pattern. As we get into Friday, energy kind of pulls out a little bit. I think on Saturday we'll still see some showers. That'll be the case Sunday as our next system approaches. And then Monday may be our best chance for rain. We've got upper level support. We'll have a frontal boundary in place. So yes, it is an active pattern going into next week. Temperatures today into the 70s for highs. We'll go 77 here in San Antonio and tomorrow. 57, so a 20 degree drop there behind the front with a 40% chance of rain. And just a slight chance Friday morning, some chances over the weekend, and a 40% chance on Monday, too, with yet another front. Guys, I like that rain can. It's looking pretty good. It's more spring like for sure. All right. Thanks, Justin. All right, take a look at some lotto numbers. Pick three, five, five, zero, fireball nine. 
Daily four, nine, eight, four, three, fireball, zero. Cash five, one, 11, 26, 27, 28. And Mega Mate, five, seven, nine, 20, 57. Mega Balls, 15. Mega Plier is three. Good luck. And welcome back. It is 557. We want to remind you about the upcoming KSAC Community Blood Drive. It was scheduled for earlier this month, but it'll take place on March 1st and 2nd. Now that's next Monday and Tuesday from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. Blood supplies across South Texas are still critically low. The Blood Drive will happen at the Whitty Museum, and you can find out how to register on ksatcommunity.com. Hey, single parents, my face extra pressure while raising children. Ahead on GMSA, we'll show you the different ways single parents can power through the pandemic. Coming up, and more traffic, weather, and news on the way as we show you some shots from Trans Guide. As we go to break, we'll be back in just a few minutes with another hour of Good Morning San Antonio. The Humane Society is trying to work through damage after the winter storm last week. We will see how it's impacting the employees and the animals. Taking a look outside with live cam, 64 degrees at 6 a.m. Uh, but Justin says it's maybe warm out, warm out there right now, but things will cool down in just a bit. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It is Wednesday, February 24th. Thank you so much for waking up with us this morning. And I really have been enjoying this warm, even I'll take the muggy weather too. It feels humid out there. It's been pretty nice. One more day and then changes on the way. Changes, but it's uh -oh. not the, the, the wild changes, <laughs> okay? We're going to get a front tomorrow to cool us down into the 50s, but no freezing temperatures. Nothing wild. Nothing wild. Uh, we do have some really warm numbers this morning. I mean, we're in the 60s. It's humid. You guys mentioned that. It's sticky out there. That's leading to some fog in a few spots. Uh, not here in San Antonio, though. 64, basically across the board here. 63 Stinson, 65 Castroville, 61 Comfort. Uh, we are looking at some 50s out west, 58 right now in Las Maples. There's a look at the visibility. We've been, we've been seeing it dropping around Rock Springs and Uvalde. That's kind of the, the one zone there that really is dealing with quite a bit of fog, probably out around Del Rio, too. Everybody else is looking at uh, visibility. Uh, it's looking pretty good. Uh, 68 degrees noontime, 72 by 2 o'clock. We'll be up around 77 for a high today. Yesterday we were at 78. Today it will be uh, almost as warm, although we'll have some cloud cover to contend with, at least for the first half of the day. Southerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. I mentioned that front. That makes for big changes tomorrow. Some rain, some cooler temperatures. We'll have a look at that seven-day forecast. It's a busy one coming up here in just a few minutes. But... We got to get to traffic now, and I'm guessing that uh, it's not too bad out there. Not too bad. Stuff is uh, building. The one issue we have here, Justin, this is a stalled vehicle on 281. Uh, this is a view from the quarry. It was reported at uh, Bassey Road. Good morning, everyone. There you are. And uh, so that's really the only issue we have here in uh, San Antonio. We've been talking about the issue up here, though, on uh, 35 uh, north of uh, New Braunfels near the Comal Hayes County line. That closure actually extends. Uh, into uh, Comal County now. So that's a major delay. And you see this red down here, it's completely stopped, barely moving. So that's going to a major delay if you're heading northbound on 35 out of New Braunfels and into uh, San Marcos. Uh, right now, the delay is at least three miles. The closure stretches for about four miles. So if you're coming from San Antonio, you'll probably want to take I-10 over to 123. I know that's a bit out of the way, but trust me, uh, that 20 miles will save you about 45 minutes. Uh, so uh, if that's something that you need to do this morning until this uh, clears up and hopefully uh, this clears up fairly soon. But looking out around the area, no real issues in other regions. 26 minutes on 35 once you get south of New Braunfels heading southbound. 25 minutes on I-10 from Bernie, 17 minutes on 35 from Lytle. So uh, that's the story. We'll check around the area to see if we see any other issues coming up. David, Sarah, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. We'll restore education's second annual policy forum will be happening later this morning. The 90 minute breakfast will focus on the community needs of education and workforce development. Our Stephen Cavazos is live in downtown this morning. And Stephen, you have a story about how one San Antonio mother was over was able to overcome obstacles to achieve 
her educational goals. Hey, good morning, Sarah. That's right. Well, Priscilla Ibada is a mother of three who says that she had to put her education on the back burner, but she says right now is a time to get her life and her career on the right path. Now, Ibada does tell us that she dropped out of high school about 20 years ago, and since then, she's worked odd jobs just to get by and pay the bills, but she realized that there was more that could be done. She says that she learned about Restore Education when she began to have trouble finding a job in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, but since then, she says her life has been changed forever and for the better. Ibada says that she's received her GED, but it's not stopping there. She came back to Restore to get her phlebotomy license. Take a look. I knew that it was my time to come back. And after 20 something years, I came back to Restore Education, got my GED and said, I'm not gonna stop here. Now, don't forget that 90 minute virtual policy forum will begin streaming later this morning, starting at eight. We already have a link that's posted to our website at ksat.com. Now, coming up in the next half hour of GMSA, we'll hear one more time from Ibada, who has a message to the community for those who hope to get back into the classroom. David, Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. Well, new this morning, San Antonio police are looking for suspects. They say try to break into an ATM. They say it happened at the Frost Bank on Loop 410 in Nacogdoches around 4 o'clock this morning. Police say there was minor damage to the machine, but the burglars never got inside. They say security guards saw a truck drive off, but have not given us a description at this time. San Antonio police say they are searching for suspects involved in a drive by shooting. Police say it happened around 11 last night in the 8200 block of Great Spirit Drive. That is on the southwest side near Old Pearsall Road in Loop 410. They say a man was in the front yard of his home when a car pulled up and someone inside shot at him eight times. Police say one of the bullets actually hit him in the hip. The car sped off. The victim was taken to University Hospital and he is expected to be OK. Well, San Antonio police say a woman is in the hospital this morning after a rollover crash. It happened around 1230 on the exit ramp from loop 1604 to I-10. Police say the woman rolled her vehicle off the edge of the highway and was trapped inside. First responders pulled her out and she was taken to the hospital. Police say she is expected to be OK, but she is being tested for DWI. And San Antonio police need your help solving a murder case. Police tell us back on February 6th, they found Jorge Lerma shot inside his car in the 100 block of Omaha Street. That's on the east side near the Alamo Dome. Police say witnesses saw several men with guns run down Montana Street wearing ski masks. Lerma died in the hospital from the gunshot wounds. If you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Well, just like so many in our viewing area, the San Antonio Humane Society has experienced some severe water damage from several busted pipes. Both of the nonprofit locations, its main campus on Fredericksburg Road and its Brooks Bay and Neuter Clinic on the south side had split pipes from last week's severe cold weather. The no kill animal shelters Brooks Clinic had so much damage to the pipes. The staff from that campus is working out of the main campus until the damage can be repaired. Just like everybody else, I mean, this leak is going to, it's going to be costly um, to our organization. And so water coming out in any possible, you know, in any way um, is, is damaging. And so we're looking to the community to see if there's support. The Humane Society says they are still waiting from contractors to learn how much the damage will cost, but will most likely be several thousand dollars to repair. The nonprofit says, thankfully, the main campus that houses their animals didn't lose power for long periods of time, and the animals were kept dry, warm, and safe. If, if anyone in the community would like to donate, just head to sahumane.org to help out. The Bear County Sheriff's Office wants to know if last week's winter weather event is to blame for dozens of deaths. Sheriff Javier Salazar says a special investigative unit will look into 15 cases that happened last week. This new team will include a homicide cold case detective, a sergeant from their CSI unit, a public integrity investigator, and a retired FBI agent. Salazar says he plans to issue some grand jury subpoenas to CPS Energy to determine if outages were a factor in at least two deaths. 
Well, tenants at some apartment complexes in San Antonio still do not have water. Some tell us they have been hauling water from nearby water hoses or brought their own. Others report damage to their property from water leaks through the ceiling and walls. And some people tell us they are frustrated with the lack of direct information coming from apartment managers. There should have been just more communication from the office. There should have been, you know, just keep us posted. Um, let us know that they're working on the uh, water, you know, if anybody needed anything. Well, some apartment complex management companies report delays in getting plumbers, while others say there's a shortage of parts in San Antonio. Anyone in the San Antonio area who is disabled or a senior who needs water should call 311. WellMed will open its reservation hotline for the COVID-19 vaccine this morning. Appointments will be made for 30,000 new doses of the Moderna vaccine at two of the WellMed clinics. The hotline opens at 8 this morning. The number to call is on your screen right there, 833-968-1745. Remember to keep calling if you don't get an answer at the first try. Local health officials report 270 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. Nine more people have died from this virus. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says those deaths are from the past two weeks. He also says limited testing last week during the winter storm is causing a low overall case total. Right now, the current school indicator bar is at moderate. And you could be getting a face mask in the mail, courtesy of the U.S. government. President Joe Biden says the White House is looking into sending out millions of masks to Americans. Health officials originally proposed the mailings during the Trump administration, but the former president blocked the idea. It's not clear what kind of masks would be sent if the project goes forward. President Biden has called on everyone to wear a mask when out in public, and he has made it mandatory on federal property. Well, scientists who study infectious diseases at the University of Minnesota say vaccination guidelines should skip second doses of COVID-19 vaccines for now. They say giving one dose at a time will help more people get better protection from the coronavirus. It comes after a new report that says a UK variant of the virus threatens to cause a new surge in infections in March. It is now 611 and 64 degrees. It's been a while, but the Spurs are ready to lace up and hit the court today. But who's actually going to be playing? We'll talk about that later on GMSA. And also coming up after the break, we're going to take a look at the life of the first black San Antonio police officer who died in the line of duty. It's part of our History Untold series. 64 degrees out at 611 this morning. It feels a little muggy out there, so prepare yourself for that. Definitely a nice change, but Justin says we have some cooler temps on the way and some rain possibly through next week. We'll talk about that when we come back. Five hundred East Commerce Street, still alive with business, is not so different from how it looked on December 4th, 1941. That night, Julius Alberson, a black patrolman with the San Antonio Police Department, was shot and killed with his own gun while breaking up a disturbance at a local club. The 29-year-old had been on the force for nine months at the time of his death. City policeman slain at dance was on the front page of the San Antonio Express News the following day. I think also for the African-American community, it had to have been a tragedy because you can imagine that Officer Alberson um, was a sense of pride because he came through the school. He took all of the tests that were required of an officer. Questions still loom today about Alberson's death. A revolver disappeared, 10 soldiers were detained. But the mystery remained. Who really pulled the trigger and killed Alberson? Census records reviewed by KSAT show that Alberson was from Bryan, Texas, and moved to San Antonio's west side when he was a child. He was the president of his class at Douglas High School, an African-American high school, and graduated with a four-year degree from Wilberforce College in Ohio. Alberson had a promising future in the community. He was somebody that was emerging as a sense of inspiration for the community and to be struck down in this way and for there to be a lack of justice on the other end and to have a family uprooted because a child was very young. This was just a horrible tragedy all around. No one was ever formally convicted for the murder of Alberson. Lattimore attributes this to race relations, World War II, and sympathies for soldiers during the war effort. Mr. Alberson's a hero. 
in the line of duty. Uh, and yet he wasn't treated by the judicial system in that way, in the way that traditionally happens. And I think that's the sad part of the story. For an in-depth look at Alberson's life and his trial, visit KSAT.com. Jacob Rodriguez, KSAT 12 News. Well, Samuel, we did get some calls to our newsroom about that backup you've been talking about all morning long on 35. Yes, uh, we have, and we'll get to that in, in just a moment. But wanted to talk again about what's going on in 281. We still have this uh, stall here. So you're seeing uh, some traffic uh, uh, built there on 281 as people get out and about. So wanted to give you a look at that uh, travel time uh, there. Uh, 12 minutes still between downtown and 1604, and that's a fairly a normal time. But again, around uh, Bassey and the, and the quarry, watch out for uh, that stalled vehicle. Now to uh, the issue on 35. Yes, we did get calls that people up here are have been stuck in traffic because this has been going on for several hours now. The closure starts up here at Posey Road, goes all the way down to York Creek Road here in Comal County. And so the backup does uh, stretch uh, below that. So you'll want to avoid uh, this area. But if you know uh, someone up there, uh, tell them to, to pack their patients if they if they can't get out of it. Now the frontage roads are open here, uh, but the but you can imagine with so much traffic, that's not probably not going to be the uh, best way to uh, go there. So again, that situation up here, this is 35 uh, between uh, York Creek Road and Posey Road. Find a way around it uh, this morning until that gets cleared up, guys. All right, Samuel, thank you very much. We have definitely earned the beautiful days we've had over the last two or three and on into the day. But get ready because changes are coming again. Yeah, you know, that's a little scary, right? When we talk about changes, we're like, well, what's this next cold front going to bring? Don't worry. It's just going to cool us down only about 20 degrees, not like, you know, 30, 40, 50 degrees like uh, last week's cold front. Uh, we got to talk a little bit about average last freeze. This question has popped up. Of course, we had the, the, the big time freeze where we got down to nine last week. Our average last freeze varies from about February 24th to about February 28th here in San Antonio. That doesn't mean we can't get a freeze in March. So if you're planning to go replant some of those plants that may have died, uh, just know that there still is the potential for a freeze even as we get into March. The latest freeze we've ever seen, April 3rd, 1987. So we can go into April here. Uh, the seven day forecast does not include any freezes. I will tell you that. And it typically takes until March up in the Hill Country before we see our average last freeze. So just some info for you there. Uh, temperatures this morning, not anywhere near freezing. It's warm out there. 64 degrees at the airport, 64 at Randolph, 65 New Braunfels, 63 Canyon Lake. It's warm and it's muggy. We've got a lot of moisture surging in, so that's resulting in some fog. 57 Rock Springs, 59 in Uvalde, 59 right now in Carrizo Springs. And uh, again, as we look outside, 64 at the airport, 63 Stenson, 64 at uh, Randolph with Southwest Julie winds at about five miles per hour. Visibility not an issue here in San Antonio, but as you go out west, it is. So places like Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Uvalde, and Rock Springs, that's where the numbers, visibility numbers are starting to come down. Temperatures, dew points getting close together. And so that'll be the first area where fog develops. It's still possible here in San Antonio, although winds have been up. So I think that's helping to mix up the atmosphere just a little bit. Dew points are in the low 60s, so that puts us in the muggy category. It's going to sort of feel that way even into this afternoon. And the dew point tracker shows that uh, we'll have some higher dew points today, and then the numbers will come down a little bit tomorrow behind a frontal, frontal boundary, and then pick back up over the weekend before falling off again with yet another front. This tells us that the pattern is becoming far more active. So we've got some clouds this morning. We should see a little bit of sun this afternoon. Our front comes through tonight. With that front, there's an outside chance of a shower or two, but I think our better chances of rain are actually going to come tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. This is 6 o'clock tomorrow. And then we go to 10 p.m. tomorrow evening, tomorrow night. Showers likely. Uh, we'll see them around the area scattered. And then uh, as we get into Friday, rain chances sort of taper off a little bit. But Saturday, there's still some lingering energy. Another storm system comes in. So by Sunday, we have another decent chance for rain. And I think our best chance of rain actually comes in on Monday. As this storm system gets closer, well, frontal boundary in place, all the ingredients we need to get some more uh, showers around the area. And, you know, we need the rain. We're still behind average when it comes to rainfall for the year. So temperatures today up around 76, 77 for a high. I think clouds will clear out some this afternoon, but quite a bit more cloud cover than yesterday. 
Southerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. We'll go 57 tomorrow, so about a 20 degree drop behind the front. 40% chance of rain, 20% chance coming up on Friday, and then just some isolated stuff both Saturday and Sunday. We up it to a 40% chance behind another front on Monday. Guys. Oh, we're going to have a vitamin D shortage again this week. Hey, but yeah. we, I, knew, I know we need the rain. We do. We do, and there'll be some sun mixed in here and there. That's good. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> you got it. 622, 64 degrees. Well, Tiger Woods is awake and responsive after a long surgery following a car crash yesterday. We'll have the latest after the break in sports. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Trilogy for COPD. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting <coughs> on by, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day. No matter how you got COPD, it's time to make a stand. And I'm feeling... Start a new day with Trilogy. No one's daily COPD medicine has the power to treat COPD in as many ways as Trilogy. With three medicines in one inhaler, Trilogy helps people breathe easier and improves lung function. It also helps prevent future flare-ups. Trilogy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking it. Do not take Trilogy more than prescribed. Trilogy may increase your risk of thrush, pneumonia, and osteoporosis. Call your doctor if worsened breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems urinating, vision changes, or eye pain occur. It's time to start a new day. Ask your doctor about Once Daily Trilogy and save at Trilogy.com. And the Spurs are going to be playing their first game in 10 days tonight when they take on the Oklahoma City Thunder, but they are certainly not at full strength. Most of the rodeo road trip postponed because four Spur players contracted COVID-19. And for tonight, six players are still out because of the NBA health and safety protocol. They include Rudy Gay, Derek White, Kelvin Johnson, Quindari Witherspoon, and rookie Devin Vassell. DeMar DeRozan is also out tonight to be with his family after the death of his father. Tip off for tonight's game, scheduled for seven o'clock in Oklahoma City. Hey, Tiger Woods awake and responsive. That's after he had surgery, and that's according to a post on his Twitter account. He's recovering in his hospital room in Los Angeles after the L.A. Sheriff's Department said he was seriously injured in a rollover crash yesterday. Woods doctors say they inserted a rod, screws, and pins into his leg because of fractured bones. Before this, Woods had been recovering from back surgery in hopes of resuming his pro golf career sometime this spring. He was hoping to get back for the Masters, but it looks like that is not going to happen now. And as a lot of people tweeted about this yesterday, they say never count Tiger out. No, don't count him out, but uh, I don't think he's going to make the Masters. Or yeah. He may not return this year, but... That's a long recovery. We've seen him come back from back surgeries. Absolutely. All right, 627 and 64 degrees. Take a live look outside with the roads with Trans Guide. Samuel's got you... Details on this incident over there at 281 coming up. Stay with us. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. Was it self-defense? That's what police will have to sort out in a stabbing case here on the northwest side. Good morning. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. Here on the Hill, it's day two of testimony about that deadly Capital Six insurrection. A Mike Ajachi in Washington coming up, you'll hear from even more officials who claim they too never knew about the threat of violence. Outside with live cam, a little warm today, but things are going to change with the temperature and with the moisture coming up. Good morning. It is Wednesday, February 24th. Happy Wednesday morning. Thank you so much for waking up with us this morning. Yeah, we're going to have uh, some warm weather today. So the parents, you know, dress your kids for warm weather and then don't put away the cold weather clothes. <laughs> Keep them out. Yeah, well, look, it, it's going to be chilly tomorrow, but not cold. I'll put it that way because I think we're all kind of sensitive at this point. To I cold. think we have a new definition of cold. I think we do. Like uh, <laughs> it's going to be in the 50s tomorrow. Maybe it's not that cold, uh, but it is going to get a little bit chillier Thursday into Friday. 
quick check of the pollen count. Molds are low. Mountain cedar is low. No big deal here. I'm really ready to see mountain cedar completely go away. I think it's going to happen any day now. We'll see what today's count brings, but we should be seeing goodbye to that. 61 degrees in Comfort, 61 Kerrville, 65 right now in Castroville, 63 Stinson. It's a warm, humid morning. And that humidity is leading to some fog, just not here in San Antonio. We're seeing that mainly out west. So Junction, Rock Springs, Del Rio, Eagle Pass over to Uvalde. That's an area where fog is really starting to kick in. We'll see if it happens here in San Antonio, although winds have been strong enough, uh, at least within the last few hours, where we haven't seen just a whole lot of fog here. Uh, forecast calls for cloud cover to stick around through midday. We should see some breaks this afternoon. That'll push those temperatures up into the 70s yet again. Uh, southerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. Those changes arrive tonight with a cold front, and there will be some showers tomorrow, too. In fact, we've got a fairly rainy forecast going forward, and we'll get to that seven day here in just a bit. But let's talk to Samuel now. I know we've got some issues, what, on I-35? Yes, this is in uh, Comal uh, County here and in Hayes County, Justin. So that's been going on for several hours now, and we've heard uh, from some viewers that they're actually stuck in this uh, mess here on uh, 35. Uh, we've had a couple of crashes overnight here, one here at Posey Road, one here at York Creek Road, and that has prompted uh, this closure of 35 for several miles. The backup is at least three miles, and now it's building as more people hit the roads, and then we have this closure uh, for an estimated four miles, according to our system here. So if you're coming in uh, from San Antonio, you might want to take 10 over to 123 to get to San Marcos and then get on 35, head up to Austin that way. I know that's a bit out of the way, but if you're not a person who likes to sit in traffic, that's probably at least that will keep you moving. Uh, here in town, we have a stalled vehicle on 281 uh, near the quarry, and we have actually have quite, quite tell if that's a police or a hero, uh, text dot hero truck there, but you can see uh, traffic uh, building there on uh, 281. So some, if you're you usually take that route, uh, now it's probably the time to uh, head out because uh, things are starting to build. But looking at travel times around the region, if you're coming in from New Braunfels on 35, 26 minutes into downtown San Antonio, the southbound lanes again not affected. Half an hour coming in on I-10 from Seguin, 24 minutes on I-10 coming in from Bernie. I have another update coming up. Sarah, David, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. Hey, what sounds like a knife fight has sent one man to the hospital. San Antonio police say it happened overnight at an apartment on the northwest side. Katrina Weber now joins us live from the scene. So, Katrina, we understand that you just spoke with the man who lives at the home and says he was defending himself. Well, that's right. He told me that the man who was in the hospital now was actually trying to break into his home and kill him. So he struck back. The police spoke with him and other witnesses when they arrived before 3 o'clock this morning at the De Chantel apartments. They say there was a dispute that turned violent. The police say at some point the man, the visitor, stabbed the man who lives here in his shoulder. That man then pulled out his own knives and struck back, stabbing the visitor repeatedly and sending him to the hospital. Police say his wounds may be life-threatening. Well, the man who lives here refused a ride to the hospital. In fact, we saw him just walking down the street, still bloodied and bandaged, and carrying a large kitchen knife and box cutter that he says he used in that fight to defend himself. At this time, it does not appear that he is facing any charges. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Well, local leaders are joining forces with a San Antonio nonprofit for a virtual event happening later this morning. Restore Education's second annual police fo policy forum will focus on the community needs of education and workforce development. Our Stephen Cavazos is live north of downtown with one woman's journey to higher education. Good morning, Stephen. Good morning, Sarah. Priscilla Ibada says her life has since changed for the better after receiving her GED through Restore Education, and now she's hoping that her story will inspire others to achieve their own goals. Ibada says that she dropped out of high school when she first became pregnant with her first child and found it harder to return to the classroom. She says her goals were actually put on hold so she could help her children reach their own goals. But as they got older, she began to realize there was more she could do for her life. She learned about restore education in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic and says it has changed her life forever. Ibada says it's been 20 years since she dropped out of high school, but the lessons are far from over. You're never too old to learn. You know, you're never too old to go back to school. You know, it just it's just anybody can do it. If I would have stayed, who, would I have been the person I am today? if I didn't go through what I went through when I was younger.
Ibotta says after receiving her GED, she plans to continue and get her phlebotomy license. Now, don't forget the 90 minute virtual policy forum is going to be happening later this morning at 8. We have a link that's already posted on our website at ksat.com. Reporting live north of downtown, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. David, Sarah. Good for her. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, today Congress is going to hear more testimonies from Capitol Police officers about the deadly riot at the U.S. Capitol building. ABC News reports that one officer is expected to tell lawmakers that he was never briefed on credible threats. With the latest, here is Ike Ijachi. Good morning. So far, we've heard claims of information arriving too late that could have potentially saved lives. And later today, we'll hear from even more officials who were on the ground that deadly day. This morning on the Hill, more testimony about the deadly January 6th Capitol riot. Capitol Police officers like Captain Carnesha Mendoza recalling that deadly day. I received chemical burns to my face that still have not healed to this day. Three officers in charge of protecting the Capitol pointing fingers at the FBI and other agencies, telling Congress they were never warned about the waves of insurrectionists. We properly planned for a mass demonstration with possible violence. What we got was a military-style coordinated assault. A bombshell report from the FBI. A warning was sent to Capitol Police officers on January 5th, warning of right-wing extremists preparing to, quote, fight a war. Former Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sund, who resigned two days after the riot, telling Congress he didn't see that warning until this week and that it was sent in an email. If we have information that's coming in the day before a major event uh, that, that has that level of specificity, that it could get a little more attention than you know, just being handled either through an email or electronic uh, uh, format. This morning, ABC News obtaining a copy of testimony from Brett Blanton, the architect of the Capitol, who sits on a four-person Capitol Police Board. He'll tell Congress he was never briefed on those credible threats. And the House Appropriations Committee, they're going to meet later today to talk about emergency spending for funds related to the Capitol riot. So that'll include everything from restoration efforts to the Capitol itself, security concerns, and even counseling services for everyone involved. In Washington, I'm Mike Ajachi, ABC News. 639 and 64 degrees. Single parents may face extra pressure while raising children after the break. How a single parent can power through the pandemic and thrive. Parenting during the pandemic isn't easy. If you're a single parent, it can be downright overwhelming. I think there's probably a lot of anxiety in terms of economic stress and these sorts of things. A national survey of parents with children under the age of five found that single parents with young children are more likely to become unemployed during the pandemic, and nearly twice as many single parents are struggling to pay for food, housing, and utilities. Three times as many single parents report difficulty affording childcare, and single parents report higher levels of emotional distress. So what can you do if you're running the show on your own? Experts say go back to the basics. Realize you're in survival mode and focus on making sure your kids eat, sleep well, and exercise every day. Relax screen time rules if it'll help you out and try to carve out a little time for yourself. Maybe that is having a bubble bath late at night or um, reaching out to a friend who you haven't talked to or another single mom um, potentially where you can feel that you can connect and relate to one another. Also, remember to be kind to yourself and your kids. This is an uncertain time for everyone. Researchers found children in single parent households also report higher overall levels of distress. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. And here at home, the San Antonio Food Bank worked throughout the weekend to help distribute necessities to people impacted by last week's winter storm. Just this past weekend, there were seven mega distribution sites around the Alamo City. Oh, keeping so many people fed. And this morning, we are joined by Eric Cooper from the San Antonio Food Bank. Eric, I know you've been extremely busy. Thank you so much for making time for us this morning. Yeah, good morning. So, Eric, how many people did the food bank help this weekend and how much food was distributed? Well, as soon as the sun came out, those volunteers showed up, our staff. We fed about 75,000 people over those three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. A lot of those volunteers also without power and water, but wanting to help a neighbor. It was incredible to see the generosity of our city and humbling to see the need. 
Hey, Eric, I think a lot of people will be interested in everybody was affected by the uh, electrical outages and, of course, the uh, water outages and busted pipes. So how did your structure fare over there off of Highway 90, your building? I know you got the freezer back there and a lot of people be concerned about whether or not you were able to keep that food. Yeah, absolutely. So at the, all of our facilities were kind of touch and go. The power would come on, then it would go off. Water would come on, then it would go off. We actually were very blessed. We didn't lose any food. Refrigeration held. Uh, our kitchen actually was working on a backup generator. Our chef, so amazing. They actually spent the night for three days in the kitchen. Um, we had to pivot to more prepared meals just because so many of the families we were providing food to lacked electricity and couldn't prepare groceries. A lot of meals at the shelters for the homeless, for seniors, downtown, several hotels that were housing uh, individuals just trying to get warm, the city's warming centers. And then it was on Friday that we were able to pivot to groceries, giving families a trunk full, but also a case of water. Water has been probably the most requested item. So many families without that critical resource. Our seniors still struggling. Boy, I was out delivering to homebounds and everybody wanted water. I think it's going to be a long week for us. And if you have time to volunteer and help, please go to our website, safoodbank.org. And Eric, you know, we've seen those empty shelves at our local grocery stores. Is the food bank struggling with a similar situation? Such a great question. You know, we had our existing inventory on hand. The warehouse was, you know, full, if you will. And we just withdrew from that to start this response effort. And so um, we're starting to see now trucks coming in as the roads got freed up. It's going to be tough for us. So much of our produce comes from the winter garden. Texas agriculture took a big hit with this freeze. So the next weeks and months, we're going to struggle. Um, and we're just going to be looking to maybe import a lot more product from California, Florida, if we're going to have the nutritional mix we like to offer. I was going to ask you about your, about your own garden right there on your, at your facility. I, I don't think you've probably planted yet, but how did, did anything you lose some of the winter stuff over there? We did. Yeah, the, the freeze just killed everything, um, but it didn't kill our spirits. We're, you know, our hmm. farmers and those master gardeners, they're going to be out there making sure that the farm and gardens get whipped back into shape and they start producing. You know, a lot of folks wanted to come out and volunteer over the weekend and they were a little bit frustrated because it filled up. We were shocked. We were so worried no one was going to come. And then they're like, hey, but there's a lot of vacancy during the week now and this upcoming weekend into next week. This is going to be a long term recovery. We're still fighting the pandemic. Um, and then obviously this response to this crazy winter storm. Well, you just said it. I mean, you guys had so many volunteers after you put out that call show up this weekend. Uh, but volunteers, like you said, are still needed throughout this week. And are you predicting the next two to three weekends? Absolutely. And that's volunteers working in our warehouse, packing boxes, working in our kitchens, helping with meal production. Again, that farm and garden is going to need a lot of love. So volunteers that want to work outside doing that. And then also at these distributions. I mean, that takes a lot of volunteers to execute. We are working a ton in our rural communities. Most people don't know the food bank serves more than just Bear County. We serve now uh, 29 counties total. And so a lot of those rural communities still without power, still without water, working through volunteer fire departments and county judges to get those communities secured. Um, and so homebound deliveries has been a huge need with the storm. That's always been a need for elderly and disabled. So if you have the ability to, to, to help us deliver, that's always needed. Um, yeah, just lots of ways to get involved at your San Antonio Food Bank. Hey, Eric, real quick, uh, we got to go, but want to find out volunteers you need, food or money? Would you rather have people coming with food or would you rather have them just, just send, send some cash over there? Yeah, we need both. But okay. I tell you, it's oftentimes just easiest just to go to safoodbank.org. You can donate financially there. We can leverage a dollar pretty well. One dollar equals seven meals. And so let us do the work. Give financially on our website. If you can register to volunteer there, do that. And then, um, you know, share this message. Everybody's learning a little bit about what's going on. Please use your social media and uh, highlight this this great work we're about. 
Well, Eric I mean, Cooper over yeah. at the Food Bank, thank you so much. And thank you to all the volunteers, everyone coming together. Like Eric just said, it's going to be the next couple of weeks to recover from this. I would hate to think where San Antonio would be without you and the Food Bank and all the volunteers and, and the way you uh, the way you have that uh, that place running over there. So thank you very much for, for doing what you do as well. And get some rest, uh, yeah. hopefully. <laughs> We're, we will. We're blessed. So thank you so much. Right. And God bless you guys. All right, Eric. Thanks for being with us this morning. Let's take you over to traffic and check that out real quick. All right, uh, David and uh, Sarah still have a situation on uh, 35 uh, north of New Braunfels, so watch out for that. In town, I have a crash reported here on uh, 410 at a Honeysuckle, and here's a look at uh, Transguide. Traffic still flowing well, and we were mentioning before, uh, Justin is a stall on uh, 281. That has now cleared as well. Thanks, sir. Looking at those transguide pictures, not a lot of fog out there. We're keeping track of the fog. I was also able to plot this month's temperatures so far, at least you know, early in the month. We got up to 80, if you remember that. And then we had the deep freeze go all the way down to nine here in San Antonio on February 15th. We were some 37 degrees below the average that yellow line there, the average temperature. So it kind of shows you where we are this February in general, about nine degrees below average. We average about a high of around 65. So this has been an interesting February, a wide range of temperatures. And now we're sort of getting back on track, more average temperatures next couple days. This morning, it's warm and it's humid. 64 degrees at the airport. Southwesterly winds at around five miles per hour. Winds lightening up a little bit, so we'll see if that leads to some fog. So far, ceilings are high enough. Visibility still looks pretty good. 60 in Bandera, 64 Boulevard, 65 in New Braunfels, 62 out there in Hondo. Cloudy skies there, and you'll find some 50s out west. This is the area where fog continues to be an issue. Rock Springs, Junction, Uvalde, Eagle Pass, and Del Rio. Creaso Springs clearing up a little bit. And then everybody else has 10 miles of visibility. So we're good there. Dew points in the 60s. It's starting to feel quite a bit more muggy. That moisture really came in yesterday. And it is surging north, now up around Dallas. But you can clearly pick out here where we have a frontal battery because behind it, it is much, much drier. No rain with this frontal battery yet. But we could see some rain as it drops south a little bit later tonight. You'll notice the temperatures are cooler too behind the front 41 in Lubbock 34 right now in Amarillo out ahead of it still warm with lots of 60s. So cloud cover sticks with us first half of the day. We may see some sun this afternoon. Then our front arrives tonight as it slides through a couple of showers. But I think our better chance of rain is going to arrive tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening and really more so tomorrow night. This is 10 o'clock tomorrow night and you'll see a scattering of showers around the area. Hopefully we'll pick up some rain. We're not looking for big totals, but any bit helps at this point. And then as we get into Friday, a lot of the rain starts to move out, but we'll have more chances on Saturday. Another storm system comes in on Sunday that picks up the rain chances again. And our best chance may be on Monday. We'll have a storm system nearby, frontal battery in place, all the ingredients we need to get some rain going. Forecast for today, still dry one. We'll get to clouds early. Then up around 76, 77 this afternoon and then look for 57 tomorrow, a 20 degree drop behind that front. 40% chance of rain, 20% chance Friday, 30% chance both Saturday and Sunday. And we up the rain chances again on Monday to a 40% shot. We'll be right back.